Nick, you see his triple Vardamount slip with his opposite hand? Yeah, I shared it. Oh. Let's go. What? On Instagram. <laughs> yeah. I shared it because yeah. I was like, I, I wanted to wake up and ask if anybody wanted to ask Edwin questions. So I was like, I'll use that post. And then, yeah. Yeah, congrats, Edwin. That's insane. Dude, thank you. Um, yeah, it felt insane. I had like, as soon as I landed it, I like had flashbacks of when I had like a Caleb Kendama that had no spike and I was learning border balances. And yeah. I was just like, yeah, I cried a bit. It was unreal. Yeah, you probably flashed back to your first triple border balance with your dominant hand just the other day. Yeah, like yeah. Just... <laughs> <laughs> I remember two days ago when I landed with my dominant hand. Oh my god, <laughs> dude! It's really it's 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 yeah. really insane how, like I, it's it's really insane to see the progression of the switch that you've that you've you know, taking Kandama with it's, it's crazy. I mean, most players are not hitting these tricks that you're doing with a dominant hand, you know, like the high majority of players aren't, aren't doing that yet. And to see you go right. to that level is, um, is, is, uh, it's definitely unorthodox and uncommon between uh, uh, the community. And, and I'd love to just start there. It's what, when did you start playing switch? Because obviously you're, you've put in so many hours with your, with your left hand. And I want to, I would like to know when, We'd all like to know when it started. Right. Well, it uh it had to be just after um NAKO 2019, I think. Um, somewhere around then. I had just moved to this little um this little town called White City in Oregon. And uh I mean I was skateboarding a lot and I started spraining my wrist a lot. And uh I skate goofy right foot forward, so when I fall it was my dominant hand down. And I still deal with like the, as you know, just like wrist pain and stuff every day. Um, and I'm still just like doing my best to heal that up. But at the time I was still playing Kandama with my dominant hand with like a brace. And the more I played, the more my wrist hurt, but I just like kept playing. So like for years, um, my clips just had like a brace on my wrist and I was still playing. Um, and then after I remember I was talking to my mom um, in the kitchen and I like broke down crying because I love Kendama so much. It's been my life since I was just like a kid. And um, I was like, mom, like if I keep playing like this, like and don't do anything or like change anything that I'm doing with my Kendama play, I, I like I probably have like a year left, two years left of play. And uh, so I just, I didn't necessarily start doing workouts or anything. I just started resting my wrist um, and started playing with my left hand. I just started doing it around stalls because I love Kanama so much. Uh, there's no way I'm not taking one wherever I go. So, um, like I, I, everywhere I went, I was just doing like Moshikame and all that good stuff. And I mean, I was, it was really hard, like, um, just relearning everything and like, uh, diving back into that. But I was, um, I was on deal with it at the time. And it was just when I started doing hat tricks a little bit too. Um, so I started diving into lunars to hat to lunars and stuff like that. And that's when like, like the harder tricks started coming into play. But I mean, yeah, just from there doing a lot of, uh, just switch play since then, like, uh, and then once my wrist was healed enough, I was good with my left hand. And then I liked it a lot. Cause now if I play for like two days hard with my dominant hand and it was tired or sore, I could play two more days with my left hand and then just go back and forth with my days and um mm. it, it helped a lot with that like aspect of pain and um just being able to play all the time and and what age were you what how old are you now and how old were you then when you started using switch i was uh i'm 20 and i was 16 okay yeah so you've been playing switch for 4 years yeah yeah somewhere around then and i've i've found with switch um the learning curve is much different cuz when you pl just start playing Kanama in the first place, you have to learn all the tricks and all the techniques along with building the muscles um, and doing all that stuff. So uh, when you play switch, you know all the techniques and you know all the little things you need to do to land the trick. You just um, you just have to build the muscle, um, which is like the thing that we struggle with, why it feels so weird. We know how to border balance and stuff like that. We just have to build the muscle to be able to do it with our do non-dominant hand. Um, so, I mean, yeah, that was the, that was the journey was just building that muscle. So like I'm just landed switch triple border flip with my left hand, but it's definitely like, it's only been like four years. And cause that, 
I knew all the techniques and all that stuff. It's just like doing it over and over. And yeah. Yeah. Have you ever thought about competing with your left hand? Just because, you know, you are clearly at pro level and better than most pros with your opposite hand now. Um, that used to, it used to be kind of like you're on the bridge. You're like, it was, it was close, but now you just are. You're just better than most people with your left hand. So have you ever thought about challenging yourself and going in with your opposite hand for whatever reason or? Or have you done that yet? I I haven't done that at all. And I haven't really, um, you know, if Van Jam was the first time that I played left-handed in the games of Ken. And I didn't mm-hmm. want to be like, like mean and just only play with my left hand and just get like win all the <laughs> games. Um, I challenged myself and just did one switch trick per game. And every trick that I did got a letter on the person. And um <laughs> And there, I was playing Misu at the end, and there was many times where I could have just done a switch trick, and uh, but I had already done my switch trick for the game, so I was really just challenging myself and just keeping to my dominant hand. Um, but yeah, it's ran through my head. There's been jokes. People were like, "Can we sponsor your left hand?" You know, like yeah. three six five sponsors your dominant. Can we sponsor your? You know, it's like a, it's a yeah. funny thing, but I, I've never really dove into that. If I had to, yeah, I, I probably would. Or if it was some sort of small event, like if like we did a, if Rogue Dama did an RVKR again, then I'd probably enter it like Switch and just see what happens because I've never done that before. But it's a thought. Yeah, it's it, Van Jam is kind of funny, isn't it? It's like you have to, you want to win using doing just your own tricks and playing literally to win because that's what the competition is in a sense. But yeah. you don't want to be a dick or you don't want you know it just depends on the person, right? Events that like some people have no remorse and just do that. Like, for example, at Pop Swag, I was there and, and Mahdi won. He's obviously, he can obviously do anything, but I played him in the first round of the finals. And um, yeah, he did about every single letter he got out on me was pretty much turntable tricks. And ah. I was like, ah, but th- that's, that's, that's the competition though, right? You're playing to your strengths to win right. and beat people. So I don't even be mad about it because I was just, oh yeah, he can just do that and get everybody because nobody can do it like him. So I thought about yeah the same thing for you uh, goes for you too with your switch because nobody plays switch like you and just uh, looking back on Van Jam because I've been a couple of times and um yeah I've just been in that situation where wow I can end this really quick and to be honest I I just take that route anyway I end it all the way until the finals it depends on who I'm playing in the finals if I'm playing Zach in the finals then I want to have a kind of a good game but right any, anything before that I'm just trying to win to be honest yeah. so um now respect though for uh she's what you did there but yeah it depends on the person you could have you could have you could have ended it right. if you wanted it still felt think... good until you like get second place with just like with only doing one trick per game but there was many times many people came up to me and talked to me about the match with misu because misu was just doing stall tricks she was just doing the stall things and like yeah, yeah. doing all the little like uh slides and rovers and stuff and uh you know she was only doing that so like i could have just only played switch and one um but it was definitely like it wouldn't have felt as good i feel like in my head than just like uh just doing one switch trick and then actually proving myself with my dominant hand um yeah that was a that was a, that was a crazy game that was it, i've never thought about that with my left hand before so that was definitely a very interesting experience van jam games of I, think, I, I think for her it's it's she had the mindset that you just didn't like she went for the win and she only cared about the win because she's only not right. she's also just coming from Japan, but right. she only does stall tricks anyway. Uh, I played her in Van Jam finals a couple of years ago, um, so she's just playing to her strengths all the time. And I remember playing her in the finals because I think she beat Zach in the semis, and then Zach got third that year. And I was like, oh man, like now this finals isn't going to be as fun because I don't get to play Zach, and I know right. what she's going to do, so I'm just going to come in and um, and do the same and play the same strategy and just just uh, go ahead and beat her. So. Right. Unfortunately, it went my way, but I, I I totally know what you mean. I I think I think it's just um she was she just didn't care. <laughs> and, yeah. But everyone everybody loves her anyway, no matter what she does. Yeah. And everybody was like seeing her do the same thing over and over again, and everybody yeah, yeah. I could see everybody like looking at each other, but then not saying anything because it's still crazy and it's still yeah. really impressive. Even Smith, yeah. Alex Smith, he said something before we started the games of Dama. He was like, "It's not enforced, but like." do your best not to do the same thing over and over again, mix it up. I know it's games of Dama, just have fun with them. He like said that. And then uh, I feel like, like Misu and one or two other people were were like, uh, I mean, doing the same thing over and over again, which no, I mean, it was insane to watch. And that was the first time meeting her. So she was probably like, (laughs) 
yeah, right, dude. I'm here from, <laughs> I'm, I came here from Japan. <laughs> yeah. yeah, actually, uh, there's, a, there's a different thing going on there. I definitely want to see what happens this next band gym or the games of Dama yeah. event. Like I just want to, I want to see what happens with my left hand, see if I can actually land stuff and like get letters and like do stuff like that. Cause I only got a little taste of it at, um, in those games of yeah. Dama. So yeah. And it, sure it also, could. it's just, it's like a hundred percent you could, <clears throat> but also, I mean, now you're exposed to that, that mindset of, you know, it's just, it's just so interesting with this type of competition and, and specifically because of course we have all, we are all used to playing Ken in a certain way, but then you throw the competition side in and it's like, Oh, like this is not for fun anymore. This is just like to win. And most people don't play like that. Or I, I like to think that they don't, but right. when, when that competition is like, there's the prizes, you know, there's, there's glory, you know, and then you kind of got to throw your yeah. Ken morals out a little bit, depending on where you're at, you know? So it's just the, it's just the battle and, and it's always frustrating to lose because you're, you always repeat. It's like, well, I could have done this to do it, but I don't want to, you know, I don't, I don't want to reflect myself that way and how I do these tricks. Cause it does look, uh, right. it gives a certain type of vibe when you kind of just repeat, 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 repeat just for the sake yeah. of, you know, whatever. But then at the same time, it's like to win, you know, if that's going to be in your favor, that's to win the comp to solely win the comp. That's going to, that's going to do you good, like the best. So it's always interesting. Yeah. But yeah, next next time at Van Jam, I think maybe people should probably practice with their left hand because if they don't, um, yeah, they might be just destroyed by you. <laughs> well, that's what I think about is like battle at the um, battle at the barracks. I've seen all the battle at the barracks, the, the uh, games of skate, and they go there, and if they cannot do switch flip, they're gonna get a letter. If they cannot do everything that they're doing switch, they're getting a letter on, them, or they're gonna get a letter on themselves. So it's like. Uh, I want to start that. I, that's like a, you have another hand, start playing with it. Um, and I want, I mean, it, it does consist of like not only motivating people with doing hard switch tricks, but also scaring people a little bit with like playing that in the game yep. and then them yep. being like, well, fuck, I have to actually do this. So, yeah. And where do you, and to go off that, I, where do you see switch going in Kanama? Cause you just mentioned you want to start something you already have. You already have started that you've broken people's minds of what's possible. You are the yep. the world leading right. switch player. You've broken minds of what's possible. The barriers that people have in their minds of, man, that be that's so. It's like, you know, we we conceive as 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 reality and 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 not and that is not within reality. Now you've really taken that. Where do you see switch going in Kendama? What do you kind of hope for it in Kendama? Well, I hope people just start playing with it like it's their dominant hand. Like whether or not they can like. Uh... Like in baseball and stuff, they throw usually prominently with one hand, but like in soccer, you got to be able to kick with both feet. And that that's how I want it to be. Like, I know there's a lot of really good players, like Takuya, for example. I watched his little switch highlight. He has like a switch highlight thing, and uh, it doesn't say switch. It's like this little red heart, but all the tricks on the highlight are switch. And he's done airplane, quad tap airplane and stuff, and he's like done some good switch tricks. But I want it to be like a thing that isn't like a, like this little, I want it to be like a, like a part of the sport, um, yeah. like skateboarding, you know, it's a, it's a thing. You challenge anybody a game of skate, you better know how to do your shit switch. So I, that's how I want it to be. Like you learn whirlwind regular, you learn it switch. And you know, when you like, I mean, I just skateboarded for years. So I correlated a lot with that. When you learn kickflip, you learn it regular and then you learn it fakey then you learn it nolly and then you learn it switch and there's like you learn it in all these different ways because you know if mm. you go into any sort of challenge or game or anything you're gonna get your ass handed to you if you don't have that down um and that's how i want it to be just a part of the sport everybody yeah. just dial in with their non-dominant hand non-dominant hand i want it yeah i feel like um if people did learn it uh, a little faster, right? You know, at the beginning, as they're going with their dominant hand, it, it would be definitely easier, I'm sure, right? Because I'm, I'm not yep. familiar with skate, so I didn't really know um, that you have to learn in all these different fashions or else you're definitely going to get screwed in competition. But I feel right. like if we were to all do it as we come up, you know, it'd just be acquired more naturally. It'd be acquired quicker. It'd be, it'd be just part of the price. It wouldn't feel like we've gotten, we've gone all this way and then have to go all the way back to zero. And then therefore it's not fun. And therefore people don't actually pursue this. Like definitely. Yeah. I definitely feel like, you know, like, uh, I mean, I don't know a hundred percent for sure the history of skateboarding who started uh switch 
specifically, yeah. but I know that I, Rodney Mullen invented the kickflip and then he did switch flip and he like started that. That was like the beginning of skateboarding was the switch and you yeah. having to do it in all the directions so that if you are want to be a high level skateboarder, then you learn it all the different directions. So like you have another hand, and you're going to have, if you're playing around somebody that's at a high level and you're just learning how to play Kendama, they're like, oh, you just learned Warwind. You better learn that with your left hand because I had to start back to the beginning and it was a pain in the ass and it's easier for you now. And I want that to kind of be a tip that good players give to new players in the future also so that they just start doing it and it becomes the thing. Um, yeah. Yeah, I like how you touched on there the... <laughs> How, how much of a norm it is in skateboarding, in different sports, soccer, you know, even, even like hockey, like all these different things where like you're doing stuff on your opposite side is, is going to be super advantageous. And I see with this, it's, it's, it might even enhance, uh, it, it might even enhance, it probably does enhance dominant hand play just because you're getting the same motions re-emphasizing your brain and and who knows what that what that's really doing for us um in terms of you know the brain the patterns that we're building because exactly like let's say like juggling juggling balls we had this conversation on a on a call the other day but you know the right brain left brain when you're doing three ball juggling four ball juggling top ball juggling when you get juggle tricks down and both on both in both directions not just one direction but both directions in different types of tricks it's doing something there you're moving your opposite hand in ways that you is really uncomfortable, but you just get it. You end up getting it down the more work you put in. It's, I think it's really untapped and and that overall just ups your proficiency in juggling by a ton. And same with everything 100%. else that we were talking about skate, uh, soccer. And you know, who's, to, I think, I think it's really probable that it probably does just enhance the heck out of our, our dominant hand play. Maybe you can speak to that. I mean, tricks that you have down with your left hand did you notice any any more significant progression with the, the, those same tricks in your right hand yeah like uh definitely there's a thing with um playing with your left hand and uh kendama because it's it's not only working out that other side of your brain but it's also letting your dominant hand rest so then when you go back to it you're more rested and it feels uh, like you have to, I, I, I don't know, it, it's just more rested. So you just have it there. And when like a trick, for example, that I was trying to kind of get down was just goon, what I call ploop, when you pinch it and you loop it and it does an airplane, just pinch loop, uh, um, goon, ploop, airplane. Um, that was a trick I was getting down with my right hand. And once I kind of got it down, like I started doing it with my left hand. And when I got it with my left hand, it just felt free on my right hand. And it's uh, it, it's interesting because like with juggles, you know, they kind of felt free already. But once I started doing it with my left hand, there's not only that like both brain sides of the brain are being worked, but there's also the confidence too. With like, yeah. I can do this with both hands. Like this is just like it's just free on this hand because I can do it on my non-dominant hand free. Yeah. So it's like uh, yeah. So like I think it's uh, I think it's really interesting if you compare it to working out and um you know, balancing out your imbalances, right. Tackling, doing one legged exercise, doing it's, you know, instead of using all your body, just tackling one at a time, using one arm, one leg, working them one at a time, both sides, and just focusing on fixing imbalances, doing those things. It's when you take it from that perspective. It's like, why isn't everyone doing this right now? Why isn't everybody doing switch right now? Because we're just, we just all have the biggest imbalance in the entire world, <laughs> you know, yeah. compared to, Edwin, the person, the one person who's kind of shifting the mindset, shifting the gears, and, and showing us what's possible, and showing us that it's actually possible to get to where you know he's gotten right. Um, and actually, Edwin, real quick, so would you consider yourself ambidextrous at all? No. From the um, before, no? no, no, not at all. Um, I definitely like. I mean, years ago, I put like two weeks, hard weeks, into just juggling. So like anything that I can do now juggle wise is just within those two weeks. So like I had that kind of down, but um, I never have been ambidextrous. I can't throw for crap with my left hand. I yeah. I can't kick really well at all with my left side or anything. I've always had a thing with like, I've always wrote with my left hand and thrown stuff and kick stuff with my right side. 
but mm. I honestly don't think that has like uh like anything to do with my left and right hand play. Um, yeah. it's like when I picked up the dom with my left hand, it felt like I started brand new. The only thing that was different was I had all the techniques and stuff downloaded already. So I just, it was a matter of building a muscle. Um, yeah. 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 I, I think feel like that is kind of I rare mean, though. Think... If you write with your left hand and then like you're playing, if you write with your left hand, you're playing Kanan with your right. I feel like that. I, I mean, I would, so I would have to look into like what the real meaning of ambidextrous means. Obviously, in, I mean, in my mind, I'm I'm thinking like a person can do just as good on their quote unquote non dominant hand than they <clears throat> can on their dominant hand in most things. But I feel like yeah. that is rare though. When I found out that you wrote with your left hand and your right handed canal yeah. player, I was like, "Wow, that's really cool and interesting." Because that's I don't meet a lot of people like that. Not even Nick is is like that. And I think I I I think Nick, and Nick does stuff with his right hand that he anybody's left handed. So yeah. I got, I would consider myself I'm left-handed. Obviously, I play Kanawa with my left hand. I write with my left hand. I throw frisbee right. with my left hand, but I kick. But all the other throw sports like baseball, I'll shoot basketball with my right hand, kick with my right foot. I'll do all those things. But it makes sense. It makes sense to me because, oh, you know, I, I'm I'm lefty and I write lefty, so it makes sense that I'm left-handed. But then I look at you, and it's just opposite. Where yeah, you you play Kanawa with your dominant right hand, but you just write left, and then. All, the, all these other things is right i don't know it's just it's backwards to me but I yeah like it. writing writing has always been on my left side but everything else is on my right yeah. side and i i've also like um i've drawn for like years and I, i'm like pretty good at drawing and yeah. so that that is definitely something where i've used a lot of like left hand muscle and time and just put into that oh, side nice. of my brain but i i feel like that um that like my brain has been very divided in that sense of artistic and physical or like uh the uh, like my my left side my left arm is like the artistic side and my right side is the physical side that can like throw and all that stuff and it's been very divided since i was just a kid yeah real quick i just want to speak for the people who are playing switch out there then i'll say the normal i'll speak as a representative you know of the uh <laughs> <laughs> oh no did i did i just did i just lag out yeah <laughs> Dude. all right well i'm back um Go. Yeah, I'm back all right yeah yeah so for the past couple of days i've been um uh practicing switch in a different way because up until now i i always played switch actually at my old uw nama jams uh back when i was a senior there and, and still at the school just because I wanted to do Kente with everybody, Kente testing and play games of Ken with them. So I always use my switch hand and I thought I was getting pretty deep, pretty good. I, I would probably say that I was, a, I was a top switch player. Um, and I've gotten, I've done some of the hardest tricks switch. Um, no, obviously not including Edwin, right. I'm, I'm speaking for the, you know, people who are still working on it, but, right. um, <laughs> um, I, 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 got to, I, I got into this level, but after seeing Edwin and, and just being inspired by the fluidity of his movements, while he plays switch because everything you can't even tell it's switch anymore it's it, i can show kids uh who don't know edwin like look at this trick oh it's amazing oh they're like oh that's crazy they'll walk away and they don't even know they can't even tell it was switch but i've even just by doing motion kame with my right hand i've noticed improvements in the fluidity of the movement and doing basics right like cup flow and cup spikes and stalls like no tama tricks pretty much except for like lighthouses trade spikes it's it's very humbling but it's also very very satisfying to see yourself getting more fluid it just feels so right um, it feels all these steps i skipped doing double stilt tray or one two three in order to roll in or other other tricks right with a switch hand it it feels really really good to go back and do these basics because like i said just leaving a lot of gains on the table uh, by not doing these yeah. yeah you'll see you'll see a lot of like um dominant hand players even um like uh what's his name I can't remember his actual name, but like Kendama Fart on Instagram, for example, Trevor. he has like, <laughs> yeah, Trevor, he, <laughs> he can do quad lunar tray flips. Uh, like he's, he's crazy. Uh, honestly, like I, I've seen him play and he's really good, but he just learned around down spike. Sorry, grip. And it's just like, um, there were so many steps there. There's so many steps yeah. that were skipped. And it's definitely like as a high level Kanama player, it's kind of just like, man, like how much better you could be because there's so much skill there. If you got those down, like 
there's that exponential movement and growth that is just so next level and something that it like he's just tapping into now like getting those down so like uh it's very important to do that yeah. with your like non-dominant hand and just get yeah. I mean that's what I did with my dominant hand when I first started in middle school I was just doing pick up smoke up base up like orbits and just really quick stuff so when I started with my switch hand I started doing that kind of stuff and going around stalls and around yeah. like around you say and stuff because it's so important it seems so it seems so obvious, but nobody does that. Nobody wants to waste time doing the basics of the right, the opposite hand. Uh, not even me. I just wanted to do Tom tricks. That's all right. I did. I used to think, yeah, I'm good at Tom tricks on my right hand, but once I go to Ken grip, I'm, I'm kind of, it's tough for me. And, right. and thinking about that now, why did I, why didn't I realize it sooner? Like that's just wrong, you know? Um, and, and Kenama is so, so, um, I'll say it's easy nowadays because uh, the Kenamas are so good. It's so easy, which makes it so hard. And that's why people are doing such hard tricks. But there's so many things to do on it now that people skip the basics of around down spike, right? Like yeah. even kids who are progressing at a million miles an hour, just where, I, where I'm living right now. Um, I asked this little girl, eats to know the other day, if she's ever done one, two, three J-stick before. And she said, no, I, I've only done one triple J-stick ever in my whole life. And she's over there doing 50 juggles to spike, late to quad tap um like camp flips and everything i'm like wow you have done a one triple j and uh i think we need a i think we need to set it back a bit <laughs> i think we need to go back and, and kind of fix this but yeah i think like social media and technology has a lot to do with that in a sense that like for me when i was just doing those simple cup flow things in middle school i didn't have a phone i didn't have any like any of that stuff i couldn't afford one so like I one year in I did bird for my first time and I thought I invented the trick because I literally didn't like 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 I I didn't have anybody I was playing with there was no nothing for me to see all the crazy stuff going on or anything at the time it was just me by myself and once I started like I met Alex and Evan and I, uh, the Rogue Dama guys and I started playing with them there was like some growth there. And then once I got like an iPhone four, everybody had like iPhone eights at the time. But once I like traded up to get an iPhone four, I couldn't post stories or anything, but I started to be able to go on YouTube and see the tricks. And actually like, that's when it started growing for me. But there is a thing when you're so young and you're exposed to Instagram and all these crazy things happening around the world where you don't want to build that muscle. It, you don't have to. You can just do all these other things and you just want to put energy towards that because of how cool it looks. And I think it's yeah. also a big, you know, on one hand, you know, it's easy for us to say, to look to look at these players and be like, wow, there's some holes in their game. There's some major holes in their game and I can see the lack of fluidity with their movements. Because it is, is it is it is objectively just like silly seeing people do hard tricks technical tricks but not having the basics down but it's yeah. also but like i take it back and i and i kind of look at what was what was being posted on social media what was being posted on youtube pretty much that's the only thing i was looking at kanama when i first started in 2012 was the hardest trick was like wfo you know the hardest trick was um a quad lunar flip so that's as much as i could conceptualize and now yeah. You know, so there, there, so I have only so many tricks in my brain that I'm going for, you know, in my mind, I think there's unlimited because I'm so new, but now if you think about what's possible, like what's, if, if people are getting on Instagram now, they're like, who's the best canal player? Who's the best canal player? They look at Takia's six border balance flip. They're looking at tricks that are, you know, they're looking at all the combos that you're posting, Edwin, all the combos that like Nick's posting, all the top level players. It really doesn't even matter what, what anything, anything I say right now, because anything they see is so, 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 so advanced that they're like, yeah. Oh, oh my God, that's crazy. But also it, it's also now in their conceptualization of like reality of like what's possible. So now they're right. being inspired to do these tricks and you know, nobody's posting the basics. Like nobody's really posting the foundation. Uh, yeah. And, nobody's and, you know, trying to go for people. WFO anymore unless it's in a comp trick. Yeah. And nobody's, <laughs> and nobody's trying to post foundation. Like, honestly, I, I get why people don't do it. I mean, people want to post stuff. That's their best. If it's, that's entertaining, whatever. But it's just, I mean, when I was around, people were posting that basic stuff. You know, I was, but, but the Kanama was less developed. But now it's at such a point where people are getting into the game. They're immediately seeing tightrope flip. They're immediately seeing these trays, these taps, these one minute lines that like people are posting nowadays. And it's just ridiculous. And I think that definitely emphasizes kind of like as to what you were saying, like the social media, the internet aspect, when you see the best all the time, that's pushing your prospect, your perception of what's possible. 
but it's so easy to skip over the basic right. foundation. And honestly, dude, if I started, if I started back, um, you know, if I started like two years ago, I mean, I can't even, I couldn't say with hundred percent confidence that I would have the same motivation to, you know, hone the basics if I'm seeing these stuff. Cause, cause I would want to be like, I want to land those tricks too, or like versions of them. Um, right. I get it, but it does, but you know, at the end of the day, these, these players, like, obviously people can play Kanama how they want to, it's going to be, you know, how, or how fun it is. Like if it's fun for them, like for sure. But like, um, I, I think sooner or later, if people keep competing and have the people competing, like people who have can do really hard tricks and, uh, but don't have the basics down, they're going to get experiences that cause them incentives to kind of go back. Um, but it kind of just takes more or they might not, I don't know. I think it's just, yeah, whatever happens, but I understand why people are getting into it like that. Yeah, I think to a point like uh, like social media and stuff like that is a problem with people like learning Kendama in the beginning. It's just an issue. Like you should not have a phone or be trying to post or be like you should have like a Kendama player around you that's like giving you some tips here and there on beginner tricks. But like I think to a point with like like what you were saying, Nick, with the like 50 juggles and stuff like that, but only doing trip J once. Like at that point, it's like a bit of a problem. Like you should be having like I mean, in yeah. my opinion, one, two, three, inward J stick pretty consistent before you're doing like, like 50 juggle with like late quad taps and stuff, you know, there's like a, there's a point where it's yeah. a slight issue. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely just for my progression, obviously juggles weren't a thing, but yeah, I, I'd land one, two, three regular and inward all in a row before I even hit five juggle spike or something like that. So, right. Uh, right. Yeah. It's just different, different, different paths, but um, Hey Zach, let's make that. Let's let's make a let's make a little basics uh thing. Let's drop that. Yeah, sometime. definitely. I think it would help. I mean, it, it does. It just easy. looks dumb when you can't do basic stuff and you're doing harder tricks. Then yeah, it just looks dumb, uh, honestly. So, uh, yeah, that's yeah, that's a good make, idea. Let's yeah, let's do that. Yeah, it help a lot of pl people out, even like Trevor and stuff. Like people, people like that who like need need those like <laughs> like basic tips and things like that. Like that's a that'd be huge for the community in right. general because right now they're just seeing all the crazy stuff and. They're not seeing any of the, the things that they actually should be. And that's, that's really right. important. I think, I, think, I think we can, yeah, no, definitely. I think we can uh, leave it there on this on this topic. But honestly, if if people are, there's going to be people out there saying, play all you want and, and play, do this, you know, do this. Um, I'm just going to do it because I like it. I don't care about this because this trick doesn't matter. But at the end of the day, it's, um, if you could do it, I think you'd be pretty happy. And I, if you could, if you were good at it, then it, um, you know, you like it. Um, and they're basic tricks. So I think they're, I think the basics are honestly, if you don't have the fundamentals, it's kind of, I'm going to, I'm going to just say it's, it's kind of embarrassing in a sense coming from my perspective. Um, Cause I, I hate when I, when I'm playing kids here too, and I can, I just feel so bad watching them try all these things. And I know I could just do around down spike or, um, you know, another around Europe trick or something like that. And they wouldn't have a chance because they're like, Oh, I've never done that before. I'm like, yep, well, there's a huge gap in your game. And um, yes. yeah, I, I wouldn't like to have, huge gaps in my game, you know? So, um, yeah. on, on that, on such a simple level like that. So I think that's an area where we can definitely help Zach. I think we can uh, drop that, um, very soon. Yeah. Yeah. Kendama is like just a toy, but if you're trying to play it as your sport or be high level and stuff like that, and you're hanging around a lot of the high level players, you shouldn't be having yeah. holes in your game. And I think switch is a huge hole in everybody's game. Uh, that's a, that's a huge, huge. thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That'd be the biggest hole in the game so far. Like way, definitely, way worse than all the things we just mentioned. <laughs> it's just yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, dude. So yeah, good chats on Switch right there. I would, you know, a lot of people want to know. Actually, you posted this video the other day of um, you transitioning from Shred Shredwin to ET, and you did drop some knowledge on why you're doing this, but. Um, could you kind of go over that again? And then after that, um, what prompted you to do it? People were asking, yeah, you know, I watched the video, but what prompted him to do it? You know, um, what was the reason behind it? So yeah, take us a bit through that. Well, um, well, uh, something, something for me is like, um, well, I've, uh, I mean, I was a stoner for a long time, just like smoked however many pounds of weed and, uh, have really dove deep into that and like it, you know i started smoking when i was like 14 and like dove pretty deep into that pretty quick and uh so like by the time i was 15 i was getting really stoned every day and a lot of people were like 
like you're you're the stoner like like out of all the people who smoke at the park like you are the guy that rolls a spliff every five minutes you know and that was kind of me and so like when I would be hanging out with people like playing Kendama like Alex and Evan um I'd get stoned beforehand um and then I would go to their house and we'd like play and I would just be like just having stoner thoughts and that's where like Shredwin kind of came to mind and uh I was like yeah, we're just out here shredding. And then my, my name starts with Ed. And then I was like, shred, win. It's like shredding and winning, but also my name is in the halfway. And I was like having this whole stoner moment. And that name has always been correlated to that moment. And I've always um, wow. felt like really uh, connected to my initials. And whenever somebody finds out that my initials are like ET, they're like, oh, that's really cool. And it's not a name that I gave myself when I was really stoned. Um, and I also sign everything with that. Legal documents. The signature on my ID is ET with a little kendama next to it. Um, so it's like, uh, it, it's it's just me. It's been me. And it's just something that I've never tapped into. It's like that that next level self that has always been there, but I've never been, I've been too stoned to like try and reach for it. And so, um, yeah, uh, just uh yeah I, I don't know people people have always like uh said it was such a cool name and things like that and I've just really like like what if I changed it what if I dove into this and it's never something that I did but you know I have been pushing myself uh and you know like starting G standards and like uh that really started me on a huge path of like getting healthy her. I've always been really healthy, done stretches and stuff like that, but I've never really dove into becoming my best self, that next level standard. And G standards really opened that door for me, which was huge. And um, within the first couple of weeks, I was seeing great results. And I um, I started seeing like, uh, like some David Goggins on my phone. And I dove into that a little bit and kind of started really callousing over the victim's mentality. And uh, just feeling always like a victim, you know, with like living out of the car for however long and just like being poor my whole life. And like, uh, like even just like my mom raised me and my brothers um, single for like my whole life. And she uh, she adopted my brothers from her older brother. So I was an only child and I'm forever grateful for my brothers and always will be. But there was that thing, that emptiness inside of me where I was like. Um, as a kid, I had all the attention when I was a baby for my mom until I was two. And then after that, it was like her attention had to be split into threes. And so that was really hard um, as like somebody who's been so connected to my mom for my whole life. And, you know, I love my brothers, always will, always have, you know, love those guys. Um, that's just something that I've always dealt with. And uh, I mean, I've just always like talked to myself in my head like I was a victim and like all this stuff and been down on myself and just like uh, felt so alone that's like a huge thing I've always dealt with is feeling alone and um really like like yeah so I've just been really jumping into callousing over that pushing myself physically mentally getting uncomfortable and uh s seeing results within the first couple of weeks with changing my diet changing my mindset and then it just came down to being like, you know what, this name is just not me. And really accepting that really becoming that next level self and just, um, you know, like, like, people call me Edwin, that's fine. That's my name, you know, but like ET is like what I prefer now. It's like definitely that like, uh, that, uh, that next level when people call me that it makes me want to be better, because I also feel like I'll probably uh, I'll probably never feel like I'm fully that ET. And that's what will always keep me going. Um, so it's just, uh, um, yeah, yeah. The, there's this thing with a higher limit problem. Some people call it, or like what Goggin says is the box. We're all chilling in this box, this comfortable box that we're all in. And we, um, nobody or barely anybody jumps the box. Uh, cause when you look outside this box, all you see is avalanches, hurricanes, tornadoes, all these things that you don't want to deal with. And, uh, like all these problems in your head or past things, you kind of just want to stay in your comfortable box and just keep living life because life will just keep happening to you and you can just keep trying to survive or you can jump the box and do your best to become that next level person, get uncomfortable and do all those things. And that's what I've been doing. You know, I jumped the box and 
um, it was really hard to kind of like uh, change that name and stuff. And I had to change like my crochet account's name and like all these things that I've kind of built around Shredwin. It's a very, it's a very like cool name. And um, man, the support I got from the Konami community was huge too. It really hit me hard. Uh, only good things and people are just really stoked for it. And it just makes me more stoked for it. So that's kind of like the, the whole thing with the EET, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so to summarize your, this version of yourself, you want to leave in the past is associated with Shredwood, right? Like this victim yeah. mentality, this stoner vibe, this uh, person you're just not generally proud of. And you were able to kind of see that in the recent month, month and a half recently, um, you know, starting down this journey and throughout this process, you've realized, okay, this is not, this is something that's reflecting values I don't align with. And ET is essentially the version of yourself you want to become the ideal version, the person you always wanted to be, um, the person who's going to kind of break out of this box. Right. Um, that's, then, that's really me. That's actually me. Um, that's actually, yeah. Yeah. And I, I also think about like, I, uh, I think about Shredwin and how stoned I was at all these events that I actually did pretty well at and the amount of the lack of practice I put into the tricks and like completely like like did really well and like i i think about that and like man if i actually didn't get stoned and put in the time how much better i could be than that because of how well i did without that so it's just really yeah. something that i'm excited to dive into and i yeah just becoming an adult also is just turning 20 and just becoming an adult i'm like i got to leave this behind and just like become my best self so that's been that's the journey that's the next step yeah, I man, love that. Had, uh, and, and, you know, I, I want to highlight that exact thing that you just said and what you touched on a little earlier. You know, you said, I don't think I ever will be uh, the fullest version of ET because I will always think it's, you know, it's always an ongoing, I'm always going to be striving to get there no matter where I get, where I, where yeah. I, you know, what stage of, of this I ever, I achieve. And I think that's, I want to highlight that because that is the beauty of setting this, this standard for yourself, this goal with these, these big goals, you know, things that we don't happen yeah. overnight, things that don't just happen in a week or in a month. Um, these things that are long journeys, but in the reality, it's not, it's not even the, it's not even the goal. That's like the most valuable thing. It's what you do in the process of it. And I think that's, you are a true, you know, you're, you're exemplary, exemplary with that. It's, uh, the process you've gone through in the past, in the past month, you, i Nick and I have seen it, you know, the switches you made, your mentality, the things you're cutting out of your life, the things you're introducing into your life. I'd love to actually hear from you more specifically so the viewers can can know what habits were you exemplifying with Shredwin more in detail in terms of, and then what have you been kind of, what, what switches have you made in, in the sense of, of everything, just anything that, that sticks out in your mind from Shredwin to ET, what are you implementing now that you weren't implementing back when you were um, Shredwin? Right. Um, well, Shredwin was very comfortable. He was very, uh, he'd just get stoned, crochet. He's still getting stuff done. And uh, he's always, he, he would always be uncomfortable because of the past and the way that he was looking at it. Um, but it was just the, yeah, I've really just been putting in the physical work and um, listening to my body, like practically hearing the pain in my body and in my, like my head and just going, there's no way like around it or over it, or you're always going to be pushing that. The only way through it is, through it straight through so like i've I, i'm just like when i started like I, I started doing runs every morning and uh started setting goals with that because i used to do cross country and i just i like quit for no reason in the middle of middle school I was doing pretty well with it and i just stopped um got down on myself and just really was just like oh well, like yeah i just stopped so i started setting goals with that pushing myself and in those physical gains, I started like in the middle of my morning run. I, I didn't want to run. I wake up early anyways. I wake up at five or five thirty by myself, even like Shredwin would. Um, and so that was already like, uh, I, I felt like I had that step ahead too. Like I didn't have to set an alarm to try and wake up early. I already did. So I'm like sitting here at five thirty AM. 
I don't want to go run. I don't want to do all this stuff, but um, I know that it's going to help me like crazy. And uh, I know where it's going to take me, but the process is what is like the, the hard part. So it's very scary to go out in the, like the blistering rain and the wind and run against it for like five miles. But like in the middle of that, all of these different things from my past are hitting me head on and I'm having to deal with them to keep pushing, to keep getting to where I want to go. And it's a great physical analogy that would make me cry every single time I'd go run every, for the first like two weeks, I'd just cry. And, and it's a great metaphor, just like seeing like a stick you're running past and being like, that's a, that's an X that I, I like right there. Like that's a, that's an X of mine that I had. It's right there, but I, that's moving past. We're not looking back. We're moving forward. We're keep, keeping going that right there. That crack was living in the car that that's in the past. That's not me anymore, but it's something that we're stepping over and learning from and pushing through. And we're going to see again. Cause I turn around and I see that shit again. And it's like, uh, uh, it's just a really strong metaphor that I've really been tapping into the running and, callousing over the uh stepping out of the box callousing over the victim's mindset and you know instead of crying on my runs because you know when it's uh the the wind is really hard the wind and the rain is a really hard one that really digs deep with emotions um but when it's just like this morning really warm you chill overcast like morning no wind or anything and you're just in your head no headphones and you're just running I, I'm motivating myself now. I'm like, let's go ET. You got this. Like you, you like, uh, and I really tap into what like Goggins calls the cookie jar. And uh, it's just like, uh, you know, I ran 35 miles in seven days, just like a couple days ago, I hit that goal. I can run this like, cause now, cause now I'm strategizing and I'm learning. So now I'm running three, three mile mornings, just this like chill, still dealing with the mental, still breaking that sweat, but not hurting my legs to where I can't play Kanama. Uh, so I'm really strategizing that more. And uh, so, yeah, I'm like, I got this, you know, I lived out of the car. I quit weed multiple times. I, I'm like, I, I've done all this stuff, all these changes and uh, I can get through this. And uh, it's been really, really uh, nice. It's been, yeah, it's been great. Yeah. I think that's absolutely, God, that was awesome. Just uh, moving past sticks and, crossing out those X's, right? You're moving past your past self. And ah, I love that analogy. Uh, Zach and I were definitely just getting pumped right there. Um, <laughs> that, we've never heard that before. Um, but I just want to say, you know, seeing you ever since we started G standards compared to right now, I mean, you've gone through, you shed a lot of skins, man. You, you have gone through a lot of versions of yourself and, you know, it's been such a great experience for not, me, not just me, but Zach also just to be along this journey with you. And, you know, playing any part we can to get you where you want to be. Um, we've, you know, it's it's really, really uh, kind of a, just a blessing to connect with you on a deeper level like this, like we never have before, right? Um, once we started working and not not only just with Zach and I, but, you know, once we got this this group started, G Standards, it's, um, you know, it's just, it's just good to know that there's this team that you have that's behind you all the way. And supporting you through the changes because everyone is trying to make similar changes to you and becoming the best version of themselves and the best player they can be. In order to do that, they're going to have to tackle different things personally, different tackle different things in Kanama. Um, and for you, it's this path. It's this hard path that you've, you know, avoided for so long. But now it's attacking head, head on, right? Going right through it. And I just think it's been such a, an honor to watch up close. Um, and we're not even, and we still got such a long ways to go. Right. Um, so it's, yeah, uh, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot more skin to shed. There's a lot more things to, a lot of goals to work on, a lot of diet things to figure out and learn from and, um, just get to know more. And I just, uh, it's really nice to know. Well, we're all like our own person and in our head, nobody else is in our head. So like technically in our head, we're alone 24 seven in our head. Um, but it's really nice to know that there is a group of people that is striving to just be better. And that is something that I can like text, call, send my win to like today with the switch trip border flip. I just, as soon as I landed that, I trimmed it. I, I took a video of myself pretty much in tears and was just like, I just landed this thing guys. And I sent it in and it was just instant love. 
um, instant stokeness that was different from just social media and all this, like, honestly, like toxicity and stuff like that, that goes on with Instagram and all this stuff. And it's just so like pure and nice. I've always felt like, uh, something I've drawn a couple of times in past, like talks with my mom. She's like, visually draw how you feel. When I talk about just being alone, I'll draw a circle and I'll put a bunch of dots in the circle. And I'm like, this is everybody. This is, this is everybody in the world. And then I'll do like a little arrow far away from the circle. And then I'll put another little circle over here. And I'm like, that's me. That's how I've always felt. It's just so far away from everybody and so different. And like, you know, I didn't have too many friends and stuff through school. I didn't have too much support besides my mom. And all my teachers told me that like, I wasn't going to do well and stuff like that. So it was definitely like, um, uh, it was, it was hard. Um, and just like, I, I did all that. And even with the switch stuff, I, I didn't just quit Kendama or stop playing for months. I started playing with my left hand cause I love it so much. And that's something that I tap into on my runs or any sort of big thing that I go through. Like I'm moving to Florida here this next Friday and it's a huge move. I've never, um, it's very scary. Uh, it's really exciting, but it is like really scary. And I, all my stuff is already on the way. It's official. Uh, so I'm just like, you know, really uh, tapping into that cookie jar, dude. And just knowing what I've done in the past, I'm outside the box. I'm in the storms right now. And I'm just, uh, I know that I can do it and just breathing and staying in the moment and being mindful of all the things that I'm doing is what's like going to help me become that ET. Yeah, dude. And it, and it's really cool to see you in this, in this transition phase, you know, and I don't think this transition phase is ever going to stop. I think it's, it's an all, it's always ongoing. And I really like how you, you just really highlighted the importance of how the physical, you know, the training you're doing this, the stuff you're putting your body through the importance of how it relates to the mind. And, you know, I think that's something that a lot of people can benefit from hearing from something that, you know, to see your transformation, this big transformation, because you said it yourself, you, you know, Shredwin, Stoner, you know, totally thinking in a different, different perspective, different capacity, victim mentality. And then you start changing a couple of things, you start changing your habits. And when you start running, you start seeing this, you start uncovering things that you were not even aware of. You're working through things that are super hard for you, but we're not even in, definitely not even in the span in the you know in the realm of even facing just just even a month prior you know yeah. this uh this this i think the yeah so you telling your story about that and how it's how it's affected you positively have changed you and you know not saying you you never said it was easy you know it's not easy to do these things and especially to deal with the mental battles that you've done on these runs again i'm going to come coming back to what you said about you know you passing these sticks and rocks and saying that's the next or that's you know that's me living in a car or and then coming back and face them every single day. Cause I know you do the same route every single day. So it's, it's, it's really, really cool. And I think there's a lot of value in that. So I hope a lot of people take value from that and and can work that into somewhere in, in their life because the physical is, is, is tied with the mental. It's completely tied with it. hundred yep. percent. And I'd love to hear more about how your mindset has your, has your mindset changed at all from Shredwin to ET in terms of Kendama? Has, has that changed? Where's the change has been, been there? Holy smokes, dude. It's a, uh, it's complete night and day. Um, and I'm, I mean, I'm sure that you guys and everybody that's been seeing my clips is, uh, I mean, in the comments that I've noticed people are just like, damn, this is ET. They can tell that it's different. Um, because there is like, uh, I don't know. It's more professional. Um, I haven't snapped a string or broke a Tama, um, since, just before I turned to ET, um, that was huge. I've always, uh, kind of dealt with my emotions and stuff like, uh, with through Kendama. So like, I mean, for example, living out of the car, if like me and my mom would get in an argument or something, that's the only person that's in this car. I can't go anywhere like else. I'm going to be around this person. So I'll just step outside the car and play Kendama. And so like, that was something I've always correlated with my emotions. So when I would just play Kendama, I'm dealing with all this stuff. I'm not pushing myself running or anything. I'm just playing Kendama. So all these things are coming out while I'm playing. The string keeps getting in my way. I'm not able to handle it because I know that I could have landed this, but the string keeps messing with me. And it all, it, it's just like a mental game, like with life. Kendama is life. 
um, in the sense that there's always something there that's messing with you. And it's just a matter of how you get through it and how you go for that trick, lace the banger, get the goal that you're trying to get to. And um, man, I, I've been really correlating string with that a lot. It's something that I've battled. All phenomenal players have to battle. Um, and man, sometimes like I would go out and try and get a trick and I would catch three times in a row and I, th there's a broken Tama. Um, and like, it, like it's kind of like with snapping boards. I grew up um, like when I did, like when I was around my dad, he would take me to the skate park and we would skate a little bit. And this guy, he would just do one kickflip, one. And if he, if he, I've watched him land primo, which is just like on the trucks with the wheels sitting upright and it's, it hurts. I would see him land primo one time and him fall over and he would snap his board and then he would just throw it in the truck. We've been there for 10 minutes. And that's how a lot of my, um, a lot of my Kendama sessions were, where I just wasn't pushing myself or trying to persevere through those like mental hard, hard moments. I was just uh, giving up. I was letting the trick like have uh, control over me. Like I have for years with school and, all these past emotions and being like a uh, feeling like a victim, you know? And like, uh, I, I'm, I just, I'm just done doing that. There's no more broken Thomas. There's no more, even broken strings do it. The, the snapping the string is huge for me too. Cause you know, like, I, I mean, it's just, it's that easy. And when you just like have it right there and you can just see how soggy it is and you know that it's probably a 60% chance it's going to catch the next try but you just keep trying because you want the trick so bad. Um, it's, uh, it's been huge, uh, the mental stuff that I've been doing and trying to become my best self. It's just directly tapping into Kendama. I wasn't even going to, uh, that wasn't even the goal was like to stop snapping strings or Tamas. It was just something I realized through callousing over the victim mindset. It was like, I was playing Kendama and I wanted to snap my string. And I was like, but that would be giving up. And that would be giving this trick control over me when i'm literally holding the kanama in my hand i have control over this and it just uh i mean yeah it's completely changed my life through like i mean everything and kendama um which is yeah it's just been huge all around uh yeah yeah and just with my tricks too not even just powering through like breaking the strings or the tamas um just going for tricks my weaknesses um Another, another, uh, Gog Gogginsism, you know, he, he does like, uh, uh, tripling down on your weaknesses. I have touched down on that with my Kendama hugely, just tripling down on my weaknesses, trying to go for like more string tricks, balance tricks, taps even. I've never felt like I could do 10 tap. I haven't posted the clip or anything, but I did a couple weeks ago and it was just huge for me, just tripling down on that weakness, knowing that if I push through this, and just um just keeping that mindset while i push through it um it, it's just gonna help me come out as a stronger more better version of myself um and it's yeah it's changed me completely and hugely with kandama yeah dude i i think uh i think moving on past the or getting a more control of your emotions just and your whole story is incredible. I, I was so before I say anything else, I was once once you I just want to say that once you um made the change made the change and switched for G standards, I was so, so excited, like over the moon about it because I was envisioning this change happening, envisioning a higher being just coming out of it, but you're blowing all my expectations away. Um so yeah, super excited that we um have had the opportunity to do this together. But um You've, you've done obviously all of the hard, you've pushed past so many hard barriers and made so many difficult, difficult changes, dude. People don't have the same experiences as you. People don't have the same path as you. And you are definitely a unique individual. And it's it's just the greater the story, right? I mean, the, the everything you've coming from now and all the changes you're making, it just makes for a greater story in the end. And, and even just the Kanama side too. Yeah, not seeing you throw... Kanamas all around, breaking the string, cracking the tamas. I mean, you probably can't even count how many you went through uh, just by raging and doing that and getting overwhelmed. But now to see you make the switch to ET and, and ah, man, it's just you haven't broken one or done any of that since um, is what you said. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Before. 
Not one. Oh, God. That is massive, man. That is that is massive. So it is. Yeah, it just it's 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 really amazing because it's only the beginning. It, it really is. It's, it's only just started. So hey, what else can 2024 bring for ET? Truly. Yeah. With that being said, I want to what what exact I'd like to get clear on this for for us and everybody listening. What you talked about that journey towards being your highest version of yourself, ET. What message do you want to send explicitly as ET, not only to the Kadama world, but to the entire world in, in general? Uh, man. Well, something something that correlated with me hardcore was I, I just watched all the Rockies like back to back. I've seen the first one a couple times, but like I just watched all of them. Um, and in the first one, he talks about like uh, going up against um, Apollo Creed and how scary he was. He like cries um, holding Adrian and he's like, I don't even want to win. I don't even want to win. I just want to go the distance. And uh, I mean, th that's something that's been coming more, uh, becoming more and more of a thing in my head. Like, I mean, obviously, who doesn't want to be the best, you know? A huge thing in my head since I've become ET is I want to become, to some people, the best Kanawha player to touch the toy ever. And uh, it's just like whether or not that's gra like if that's achievable, um, that's the goal. And just um, not not worrying about winning or um, just a trophy, just just going the distance and do it, being uncommon amongst uncommon people um is because i mean kanama is one of the most uncommon things you know you go to anybody they're like what's that or like oh i've seen that like years ago but it's just an uncommon thing and just being that uncommon person amongst all these uncommon people is like a just huge thing and going the distance in that is just that's the that's this next step that's the journey that's what we're doing <laughs> yeah dude we can definitely see it in 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 your actions you know it's uh going the distance and in, in life. And you know, your goal of becoming the best player and you just said, you're like, I don't know what's going to happen, but that's my goal. I think I want to touch on that because that is super important. The intent and dude, nothing, you, that's not going to happen by accident, you know? So whether you, right. you do it or not, your chances go up a mil, a million percent compared to if they, if you didn't have that goal. And I think that's really important uh, to reemphasize because, you know, I think a lot of people think really small and it's really easy to, to be a Kanawha player and be like, eh, and even be a high level player and be like, nah, I don't really think I can do that. Or like, I can't really, right. man, I don't know if I can do that trick or like, or like that's more of his, that's more of his or her trick. You know, I'm going to stay in my lane over here. It's not like for me. I don't do that. Yeah. I don't do that. And this is a very small example compared to obviously life goals and stuff, but this is obviously really easy to conceptualize. As soon as you have the goal of doing something, now you're automatically, if you have the vision, you're automatically making uh, adjustments and and edits in how you get to that goal. Because you're, if you're, and the more you speak it, more more you think about it and talk about it with people, the more you're going to be on track. Because then you're thinking about it more, you're getting excited about it, and you're going to be doing naturally, like consciously or unconsciously, actions to get you towards that. I mean, for Nick, for Nick too, Nick winning the Kadama World Championships, even though he was the best player beforehand. Uh, before that, before the world championship, it's not like he won. It was like, yep, Nick's the best. It was like, yeah, he's definitely the best Like for like six months prior. But, you know, Nick was able to think about that as a reality, you know, to actually be able to conceptualize it. And even if you're not approaching that, you know, if you're if, if you're like an intermediate player, you're like, yep, I want to become a world champion. So yeah, have that goal. Have that goal. It's yeah. not, it's, it's, it's not that, it's not that, I mean, it might be crazy, but it's not impossible. You know, it's, it's, having that goal and and reworking from from re, re, reverse engineering from that goal to seeing how you're going to get there as long as you have it in mind the chances of you achieving it go way up because if you didn't have it in mind uh the chances of you achieving it are pretty much close to zero you know so uh, i really like that goal that you have and you know you're obviously in a great position well with kendama already i mean the skill that the, the the hours you've put in the the skill you've achieved you are in a great position you're you know you're already one of the best players in the in the united states let alone uh, the the world. So uh, I'm really excited to see. I mean, and then you're 
and you're now going through this transition. So this, this transformation. So I'm really stoked to see, um, what can, is going to come of this. And, you know, you were about to be in the same state. Uh, what, what brings, what brings you to Florida to let us know a little more about that move. You said it was a huge, I mean, it is a huge move. It's cross country. So we'd love yeah. to hear more about that. Well, um, well, it's just one of those things getting out of my comfort zone, uh, being in, uh, being in Oregon my whole life and just not making really any changes or strives to, you know, like five months ago, I moved to Portland across the state. I was in Southern Oregon. Now I'm up here in Portland. Um, but it's, it, it's the same, you know, we're in Oregon. We've been in the state like since I was like five years old and I feel very stuck and not able to grow very suffocated here, you know, and, um, something I've been tapping into is listening to that inner voice. There's like, there, we got those two voices, the one that wants us to stay at like, like, uh, our not best self kind of just be comfortable. And then there's that other voice that's like, no, you're fucking up. You need to do this, this, and this to become this like next level version. And I've been really doing the work to try and turn that voice up and turn this other one down and, um, moving to Florida, you know, my, um, my girlfriend is there, uh, and I'm just, uh, just taking that step. I've never dove into any sort of relationship like that before fully. And I've never felt so supported by someone uh, like I do with her. And I just, um, and, and the change is just so correlated with everything that's going on right now. And all of the big steps that I've been taking physically and mentally have not only changed me as a person, but it's going to help me so much with when I move there, um, like, I mean, I'm moving 2000 miles away. I am becoming an adult and I'm going to be with someone a little bit older than me. And there's going to be, um, whether or not she likes to say it, there's going to be some expectations that are going to be different than most 20 year olds are used to in a relationship. Um, so I'm doing what I can to be as solid mentally and physically to be able to do those things for not only myself, but for us. And it's helped me so much and I've never felt so supported. And um, like, I've always been doubted in my relationships. I've always been used and kind of just not really fully recognized. Um, and she also plays Kendama. So that's another huge thing I've never experienced before. So I'll be able to like play Kendama with my lady. Um, so I'm just, yeah, just taking those next steps. Um, getting Florida is, I would say like the opposite of Oregon. So, and it's like on the opposite side of the country too. So it's just, uh, that whole different change, um, with my surroundings too. So I'm just so excited and, uh, yeah, I, I, I guess that's what it's, yeah, that's the biggest thing. It, it's been helping me like try and step in like into this better self, you know, if I wasn't moving to Florida, there'd also be these steps being taken, but I don't think that they would be so exponential in my growth um because like it's just uh it's just so connected with everything that's going on right now so it's just uh it, it's just all flowing at once and is um all tapping into itself it's all helping me at all all at the same time in a way that's really stressful uh and not comfortable that is making me um push through and at the end is helping me become my better self um so i mean yeah it, it <laughs> yeah <laughs> epic man yeah I'm, I'm really excited to connect down there in florida and to hear about your florida move uh really got me stoked um when you decided to do that to make that switch um because i'll be i'll be being down there uh at april i think april 24th i'll be moving down there zach and i'll be going down there at the same time um, coming back to Seattle real quick for a couple of weeks yep. when I get there. But anyway, yeah. Uh, what's your, uh, lady's best trick real quick. Oh, her best trick. Uh, well, Kendama, have... so. Hey, Oh man. She's, uh, she's not like the craziest player, but she's got, um, she's got like lighthouse swap spike and stuff like that. I saw her do, uh, like a lunar swap spike, which was pretty sick. What? Um, yeah, okay. yeah, she's she's dialed. She's also really excited to like ask me about all the tips and stuff about all the yeah, tricks. Man. So she's gonna be growing as a Kanama player too once I get there. Yeah, absolutely. 
Wow. Okay. Well, she can she can definitely play lunar traits by Glados traits. Oh, her play. progress is about to skyrocket, dude. Yeah. Just how you were saying, just how we were talking <laughs> about the start of this podcast. You're like, it's probably preferential does not have social media and have someone like more experienced player kind of like guide you. Uh, that's yeah. She's gonna get tips from you know one of the best players on the planet. So uh, we can definitely see a fast progress incoming. Actually, yeah, I was able to meet. Uh, I was able to meet her about the border. She's. She's cool, and I'm excited for you guys. And I actually, I think I met her last year too at the Battle of the War. I didn't know it was the same person. Uh, so, so yeah, I, I made that connection finally. I, like, I, like a couple weeks after, I was like, oh, you know, oh. So, like, oh, okay, it's the same. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. No, but excited to have you here, dude. I think we're gonna be. You said uh, two two hours away. So, so yeah, yeah. I mean, it's definitely nice. It's better than you know, however many hours away we are right now. <laughs> so it's yeah, dude, it's going to be fantastic. Like, like that was just a bonus. There were so many things like she's there and that was like the main thing, but then there was all these other things happening too, with like you guys being you being there, Zach. And then I found out Nick was going to be there too. And I was like, Holy shit, dude. Like, Oh my God. And, uh, and also a big thing too is weather. Uh, it's really nice, but also, when summer comes and it's really hot and humid, it's going to be really good practice weather for a World Cup because it's really hot and humid there uh, when it, in July when World Cup happens. So it's going to be really good to just get out there, sweat my ass off in Seshadama. Um, it'll get me used to that kind of climate and um, that weather for World Cup, which I'm really stoked about. You can't really get too ready for World Cup weather-wise here in Portland. Um, so I'm just super excited for that too. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, man, so you're really, really excited for world cup and can you fill us in real quick on what events you're going to be going to this year? Um, I know it's pretty early, but if you, you oh, know, what, the idea well, I you... gotta, I gotta talk with the three, six, five guys, um, what they're planning on sending me to, but, uh, in my head, I believe, um, well, with this move too, it's a little weird cause there, we would all be right now getting on in one airport. And sending it off together so it might be a little harder for them to send me to some places uh from florida separately so um i don't know if that changes any plans i literally haven't talked to them but um uh ekc world cup uh van jam uh if anything's happening in florida i'll be there um nako just like anything big uh anything big i believe that they're gonna try and get me to ckc as well um, but we'll see what happens there. Yeah. Epic man. Hitting all the big ones. Um, yeah. you see California economic cup, right? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Not sure. <laughs> Not sure. <laughs> Not sure. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. I'm excited to see you at most of those events too. Cause, uh, Zach and I plan to be going to all the big ones this year as well. So nice. Uh, Let's go. Yeah. And then hope to see you at, uh, one that we throw down, uh, sometime this year as well. Who knows how yeah, many we'll do. Yeah, I'm we'll we'll... so excited. I've, you know, I've only like, I think I've only, I've gone up against you at NAKO 2019. We went up against each other in the finals. You just, you just took me out. Um, uh, I was so shaky. It was just like a Did three. Oh, but yeah, yeah. And then, uh, and then I went up against Zach at battle, uh, and he, he did, <laughs> and then, uh, at battle, you, you, I mean, I got one point on you, but you just took the floor, which actually, th this was really cool. Uh, I don't know, Zach, if you remember me crying so much, but I was like, I was crying with tears of joy, um, because I, I remember the first time that I met you guys, that really threw me back to the first time that I met, um, you and Nick, and that was at Sakura Classic, I 2017 um yeah i think that was the first time that i met you that was my first like actual big event uh i went down with josh grove caleb jeffries and chris june and uh it was just huge i was by myself i had to be like 12 or 13 um and i i actually stayed in your guys's hotel room one of the yeah dude you slept on the floor on you slept on our floor yeah, yeah. Was... <laughs> i remember <laughs> that was so dude oh man crazy ah, nobody was there in the room and then i woke up and there was all these pros in the room and I was like, Oh man, I was, I was pissing my little kid pants, dude. I was, I got to ask him all the questions and hang out with like Willie P and like Donye and stuff. It was like, it was really cool to like talk with the guys and stuff. But um, when I first met Nick, I challenged him to do a game of Ken. I was like, let's do a game of Ken right now. I remember that, and yeah. uh, he was just like, okay. And 
I mean, yeah, he he just got KEN on me pretty much, but I got I got one letter on him. I did one turn airplane pressure yank spike, and it was first try, and I got a letter on Nick, and it, it was I was just so stoked. I was just like, I just got a letter on one of the best in the world. <laughs> like I was I was so hyped, but then years later, like going up against you, Zach, at battle, like I, I thought you were just going to 5-0 me. I've seen how dialed you are on stage. I didn't practice for that at all. Like I was just literally just having as much fun as I could on stage. And I got one point and I was just so hyped on that one point. And it correlated with that game of 10 with Nick years prior that I was just like, man, I just cracked. I was just in so many tears. Like it was just uh, so cool to yeah yeah it's amazing yeah no i mean i definitely remember yeah i remember you know get you getting emotional at the end and and you actually got me on a trick that i thought i was definitely gonna win on for sure i was like yeah there's two tricks that i was like oh my god my opponent better not like uh, the opponent uh, they better hope they don't play all these tricks because if they do like i'm definitely gonna win but i think was, it was the true. inward juggle it was, it was a three inward juggle juxta spike and i literally i remember thinking like yep this game's over but yeah you you got, you got, you got a point <laughs> on me and uh and 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 yeah dude i mean it's it's we've known you for a while you know it's these years pass by fast dude it's it's coming in it's coming on seven years in, <laughs> in april seven full years i remember first meeting wow. you and i remember you know josh brought you in and was like hey is Guys, his kid's named Edwin. He's gonna be staying with us. He'll just sleep on the floor. I was like, cool, like cool, awesome. And you know, see, I remember, I remember your clips from back then, dude. You were like really stoked on like one point five swap spike, you know, yep. like really, yep. really hyped on that. I remember you tagging us in a couple lines you did after that event. And again, it's just really, it's just really cool. Like we've known each other for so long, and and it's been really awesome to see the progression, not in, in all of us, you know, and all of us. And to now we're here now we're podcasting and we're about to live in the same state two hours away from each other. And it's just, it's crazy. Full, it's really, it's full circle moment. Do you come, you, we come in, we, you know, we meet You're a beginner canal player. Nick and I are more, you know, experienced progression keeps going and going. Now we're all pro level, high level canal players. And we're still, we're still out here traveling to these events, still prioritizing canal at a high level, still pushing the game, dude. So it's, it's, it's a uh, man. It's, it's sick. Cause there's not a lot of people who are in the game for as long uh, as you even, and, and, and not, not to mention Nick and I, uh, in terms of years and still going pretty hard. So, uh, it's really cool. And actually, you know, it's, that's, that's cool that you, uh, I mean, about me and you playing a battle. I mean, you actually beat me quite a few times before that already. I mean, like I already had a couple of matches against you and I lost them pretty much all of them, I think. So, uh, Oh, I don't know man. if you remember that, but uh, I don't know if you remember I, that. I don't remember uh, we, that. We we all. played we definitely played a couple times before that. You and you won. Let's like, go. like yeah. So um, yeah, just man, I was probably so, I was probably yeah. super stoned. I was probably really stoned. That's probably why I don't. remember I think literally that. you probably were on one of them. Yeah. 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 Super <laughs> baked. Yeah. Oh, um, but no, dude. I'm. I'm. Yeah, man. Yeah. Great to talk. Uh, good memories, dude. Yeah, man. Yeah, I, it's so I, cool. I want to touch on the. Uh, I think I remember now playing you at NAKO in 2019. I was able to best you there. But the one match that I'm really, I remember you playing you on, um, it was online. I think it was a battle of the border online. And you went, to, you went 2 0 up on me. And then yep. you pulled, and then, we pulled, and then we pulled the switch trick. And I was like, <laughs> and then I, and then, and then you, and then you did it. I matched it. You missed and I got it. And I was like, <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> I remember. That I, I even remember the trick. It was airplane cushion in, like cush, half yep. flip cushion. And I was like, yeah, you know what? Edwin's good at switch. And honestly, if you beat me right here, it, I, you know, it's gonna make sense. But I'm definitely not the worst switch player in the world either. So, I, I, not not not, yeah. not to say we're close at all. There's clearly like levels of difference. But I knew I was like, if there's anybody who can get a point or match him right here, it has to be me. And then you missed, and I was like, let's go, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then i was able to win the match it was crazy yep. i was i was like Dude. oh that was that's the biggest yeah we haven't played much but that, that that definitely holds memory yeah yeah i remember that that was uh that was so funny there's there's so much pressure on me whenever i get a switch trick pull a switch <laughs> trick everybody's like oh well he has to land it he's, yeah. he's gonna land it so if I, there's all this stuff in my head like oh they're expecting me if i fuck this up it's so embarrassing yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and i just fucking yeah, botched it i remember missing that and just looking at my i'm like i'm so i suck dude <laughs> oh, yeah, wow. i remember looking at it and being like yes like this yeah. is my one chance <laughs> 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 um 
Did, hey, real quick, did, didn't you pull a switch trick against Johnny in the NAKO? Uh, like, just switch juggle spike. Did you do that or no? Am I making that up? I believe so. Uh, I think that was um, – he won that match. I might yeah, have got yeah. – uh, yeah, but I might have got – I think I got that point on him. I, I can't remember yeah, specifically, cool. but um, man, that that was a big that was a big transformation action. Actually, that event losing that to Johnny, I like, man, I knew I could do so much better. And at the time, being on Chrome, like I, I didn't feel like uh, it was really hard to convince Chrome to send me to NIKO. Um, mm-hmm. and just it was like it was a very interesting experience. I won't go too deep into that, but um, it was really hard. And uh, I did really well in the event, and no, practically nobody else was playing Chrome. That was not on Chrome. It was only like D Westy. Even Bonds was playing like a soul. Um, we like we were all just playing. They were all playing like different stuff. So it was uh, it was definitely interesting. And then before my match with Cress, we were in top eight, and I didn't practice for the event at all. But I had the tricks pretty dialed. And I just changed to this plasticity, this like fresh kendama, this brand new fresh kendama, the CK shape, which in my opinion nowadays is like, is it, but um, it's the worst shape yeah. ever to be created. Yeah, AK shape might have been worse, but like then they AK tried to... worse. AK's worse. Yeah. Yeah, AK. yeah. It was. It was, and yeah. then they tried to make it better, but like I won't go into that. But uh, the the uh, the kendama was just brand new, so it was just stall trick after stall trick with Johnny Crest on stage and I could see his hands. He was shaking and Johnny Crest is the only player I've ever seen shake so much, but still land his trick. It's one of the most impressive things I've ever seen is when he's an underbird and his hand is doing this, but he's still an underbird. It's a, uh, it's beautiful sight, but he beat me and I went into the alleyway and cried. I bawled because I knew how much better I could be like, like, dude, I totally just threw that match. Like, if I've had a different Dama or, like, if I had practiced or if I wasn't stoned, like, like there's all these things that I could have just done better to be better and what I love to do. And, um, man, uh, Kevin DeSoto, he came out there. He, like, sat down with me. And he, um, I mean, he pretty much just laid it down about how it's just me. And like pushing yourself to be your best isn't going to please everybody and it's going to make some enemies, but you just have to do what you need to do to become your best. And it was a really big turning point for me, Kevin DeSoto. He's also sat down with like uh, Kelvin and like it told him uh, that he has all the time in the world. That's why Kelvin like sits there on stage breathing because of some advice that DeSoto gave him. And um, it's uh DeSoto is a huge, like, like dad entity in the community, but um he, yeah, it was a big turning point for me, that match with um, Cress. Uh, yeah, every time I go up against him nowadays, I get I get pretty like, scared because he's so good. He's so good. He's scary. He's the Hulk. <laughs> Johnny's dialed, dude. Johnny's dialed. He's a different breed. Yeah, he's really, really good. And, you yep. know, I mean, I can totally relate to, you know, getting emotional after events. I... It's been a while for for me personally, but I mean, I remember vividly at the 2017 World Cup, you know, I go up there, I do my run, but then after that, I just, I, I, I cared so much. I wanted it so bad. Uh, and kind of like you, I realized I could have done a lot better. You know, I realized I could have done a lot better. And there were two years in there, there was like two years in a row there where I cried after my final run, just because it was not what I was, was I was hoping for. And just because right. I knew, because you kind of just know, like, once you're in it, I mean, you can, it's just, I guess it's that, uh, that competitive spirit and that kind of like, yeah, that competitive spirit within me and you and so many other players who, uh, want to do really well. And, and once you know, you can, once you are in the moment and you kind of, and you get that feeling like, oh man, I'm, I'm playing less to my, I'm playing way down for my actual potential here. It's, it's not a good right. feeling. It's not a good feeling. Cause there's nothing you can do at that point. You know, there's nothing you can do. You just got to accept what happens and try your best, but you know, your best isn't actually your best. Um, yep. so I can totally relate you can to always be, do better. Yep. I can totally know. I can totally experience what, uh, I mean, I can totally relate to the experience of being like emotional after events. Cause it, it it's, it's, yeah, it can be really intense, dude. So hundred percent. Yeah, well, it's just that it's that level of passion, dude. Not every Kanawha player has that amount of passion yep. for the game. And you can really tell when somebody's on stage, like the passion that they have for the game, if they're just up there, you know, 
um it's uh it's very interesting like i mean yeah my i i i bleed kendama you know i'm like i i wake up in the morning and i piss kendama you know what i'm saying like it's like it's it's my life dude <laughs> so it's like it's uh there's so much passion involved and i see that with like you and nick and like like nate on stage and like uh like Noah and uh, just all these people, you know, you see these people and they're either super like, like how I am on stage, like just super like giving hugs and like, like, Hey, what's good. And kind of like that on stage, or they're just so serious and they're just so like locked in and you can just like, you can smell that passion. It's crazy. Yeah. It's um no. And, and then I'm, I'm trying to find more people like that. Um, just trying to see, how far we can take this thing um kinama as a with a sports mindset i think it's going to be really really good uh yeah. going forward here and um yeah man just your your match with johnny i uh i remember watching that match and me like yeah whoever whoever wins this is who i'm going to play in the finals and maybe i didn't think that at the time but i i, I just thought whoever's going to win that match is going to the finals because i still had to get through two matches as well but i was like right. all right yeah um and then obviously johnny got the best of that and then well i don't know he had to hit. There's a scary moment in the semis. I thought I was watching him and Kevin play Kevin DeSoto. And I was like, wow, Soto has a chance here. He might. <laughs> Johnny's Johnny's missed a little bit. And then, <laughs> you know, and then Johnny Johnny took it, obviously. But um, yeah, no, it was uh, it was good. It was good. It was good. It was good. But yeah, I'm glad that was a turning point for you. And and, and yeah, dude, that was a year and a half ago, pretty much. And um, yeah, that was a huge reason. Like that was a huge turning point why I went to three six five. That was like. I knew that I would, there needed to be some sort of change and Chrome wasn't the place for me anymore. And that really flicked like that, that light bulb was flickering before the event because of how hard it was to go there and how much I knew I wanted to travel later on in my Kanama career. And like yeah. the, I, that light was flickering, but once that match happened and stuff and like, it just, uh, it just fully flicked on. And I was just like, man, I, I, you know, and that event specifically, I got, you know, I got offerings from like, I would say every company that was there, every company that was there was like, we'd love to have you on the team. And I, I knew there was nobody else at the event that got offers like that. And I was just like, there were so many things going on in my head um, while on stage and while off stage and things like that. And when that light flicked on, I like, um, I mean, it was either Sweets or 365. And I, I talked to you guys a bit, like with the 365 or with the Sweets and just talking like uh like teammate stuff and and ended up going three six five and it was just that was such a huge turning point for me and um man I'll, I'll always remember that match with Chris. Yeah, I mean, I think you made a a good decision there at the end of the day. Three six five, uh, you know, has done so much for you and is you're definitely the all star all star player and have left a huge impact. So you definitely chose the right team there. Um, yeah. I think and real quick, I think we're gonna. I think pretty soon we're going to wrap this up. We've been speaking for around 90 minutes now, um, but there are some hard questions I want to ask you real quick. Just some questions we got from Instagram, a couple simple ones. Um, just real quick. People want to know. I, I just want to personally know real quick, how, how many, how many teams have you been on, by the way? Just real quick. Oh man. Uh, bu 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 uh, well, some people yeah, don't cool. know this, but I've been on Falcon Kendama or Fritz mm. Kendama back in the day. Yeah, um, nobody knew clue what that is. Nobody knew that. Yeah, yeah, that was like a little company. This guy that ran the Daily Dama News can, uh, Instagram account. He started that Kanama company. So I was on there and for like three months, four months, uh, and then I went to my second Sakura Classic. Analog just offered me a spot within ten minutes of being there. I met um, uh, what, what's it? I, I don't remember her name, but on instagram it's mediocre white chick or mediocre white girl and she uh she came up to me and was like you don't really have enough like followers that was like a concern of theirs it was like uh, uh we'd like you to have like 600 but you only have like 350 400 but like we'd love to have you on the team she gave me a dama right there and i was just like whoa like let's go so analog and then i went to um deal with it chrome and 365 um yeah, and that's that's been it. And I've been sponsored by probably three or four other um like apparel brands, and then I've really settled in with uh Pedox is my home. Yeah. So you can like Fritz or Falcon, and then deal with it, or then analog deal with it. Chrome, 
three six five. Yeah, it's those stepping stones too. I knew, like, I actually knew when I got on deal with it that it wasn't the place for me. But I knew how much I was gonna grow a part of that company and how actually pro like they still are pretty prominent and like like I mean like everybody knows deal with it. But if like at the time they were even more prominent and, and uh, you know like Jared Porter was on the team and stuff like that and you know Caleb Jeffries was actually like posting clips and like uh, doing the the pro thing on there and I got a text from Caleb which was huge because that was like one of the three people that I went to my first Sakura Classic with which was my first big event so it was just like man that was full circle too I was like look at this now I'm I mean I've been roommates with him for like five months. <laughs> it's crazy <laughs> you've had a lot of stepping stones a lot of journeys um yeah it's been incredible to watch um and then real quick we're just going to do these couple other questions i'll just start at the top uh coffee or tea Ooh, coffee or tea you don't have to give an explanation you can just say one man this that's, is a, a tough that's one. a hard decision is, is the tea caffeinated oh, <laughs> i don't know what what kind of tea? Because I got some throat coat over there. That's some of my favorite tea, probably. Um, I know this one. This one's a little tough. Maybe we'll just move on to apples or oranges. Hot chocolate. I'm a hot chocolate guy. Um, All right, the so coffee tea. Not neither. Uh, yeah, apple neither. Uh, apples or or uh, uh, apple or orange juice. Uh, oh, apple juice or orange juice? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Um. Man, I I like me some good Martinelli's apple juice, but I'm a orange juice man at heart. All right, there you go. I don't even know yeah. Martinelli is. <laughs> really? I feel oh, like if man. I saw it, I'd, I'd, you know what it is. I feel like if I saw it. Yeah. yeah, you you just uh, been in Japan for a while. Yeah, <laughs> yeah probably. <laughs> um, but who's your okay? So the next one, who's your favorite skater? Skater. Um. Ooh. Uh, Chris Jocelyn or Tori right. Pudwell. There you go. I think that was uh for Trevor. Uh, can I move forward? Those last three oh, questions okay. were all Trevor. Oh, were they? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> God bless it. Uh, uh, do you get burnout? What do you do when that happens? Uh, burnout, like. Yeah, you just. I'm honestly burnout from Kendama. Do you get it? Oh, uh, I mean, not not really. No, my my uh, I'll get burnout after like um, because I'll land a trick and then I'll just click record again and then uh like keep going for another one so sometimes when i'm like 15 clips in i'll just be like why am i still going um mm -hmm. so i mean yeah i'll get burned out eventually but not usually yeah no it doesn't seem like you get burned out too much um but what was your uh first kendama oh man uh kendamako from josh grove well what was it though Oh man, I I don't remember. The Tama was like hand burned with this thing, and the Ken was a Shinzu, I believe. Um, Shinzu, but it might have been a Zen. It might have been a Zen. I'm I'm not a hundred percent on that, but it was the Kanama I landed my first spike on, and I was trading crystals at the time. I like traded him a crystal for his mm. personal Kanama, and I was like, I have a pro's Kanama. Kanama, <laughs> oh yeah. Do you still have it? That thing is long gone, sadly. But I do have my uh, second kendama ever, which was I worked my ass off uh, to get. I was like mowing lawns and helping my mom out, getting some sort of any money that I could. I got a Sweets Homegrown, which was expensive as fuck. At wow. Time. It was like $50. Um, I still have that thing. That thing's honed. Yeah. Guzman has my first uh, kendama I ever bought. Uh, actually, which was my second Kanama. The the homegrown was my third one. Guzman still has the bamboo Shinzu that I, I bought years ago. It was in my pro edit. I do a little trick on it. It's super funny. Yeah. Zach had a Zach had one of those as well. Uh, Let's go. Yeah. yeah. Um who inspires you to become the best version of yourself? Yeah, you oh, talked about man. Goggins. Are there any more people? Um People recently, uh, yeah, David Goggins, um, you two, and Takuya. I, I I've been studying Takuya, just like almost falling asleep at night watching his clips and stuff. Um, just just studying. I'm not amazed anymore. I'm just studying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Nice.
Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then I think that we kind of teeter off there, but uh, have you ever gone through a Konama slump before or how do you get out of those if you if you have? Oh man, I mean, I just got out of the one of those recently with like the whole string breaking and the Tama thing. I just always thought I'd deal with the string like I was in the moment and it's completely different now, like the way I touch it. So it's really just, um, I, uh, yeah, I mean, breathing, breathing is our life force without breath. We wouldn't be alive or doing anything. And when you really just like come back to earth and like, know that it's just a toy, then it's just like, uh, just have fun with it. Smile, breathe. You'll be good. Yeah. And then lastly, unless Zach, I want to add any more, but your daily routine, what is it, what does kind of normal day in life look, uh, look like for you with, uh, yeah, I mean, I also include how many hours of, uh, Konami you play per day, if you can actually estimate that, but yeah. Recently it's been like three hours of Konami a day, just like kind of just sitting there playing, uh, just no matter if I'm landing stuff, filming stuff, whatever, I'm just trying to have a Konami in my hand for three hours a day because it's hard with everything. But, um, Brush my teeth, Wim Hof breathing, uh, miles of run, uh, running, and shower along with a cold shower. I'll do a horse stance, massage, stretch, breakfast. That's how I start my day off. Those like eight things every single day. Yep. And then after that, it's just Kinama. It's whatever else needs to be taken care of. Everything else that needs to be taken care of right now, I'm having to like do some money stuff with sending it to Florida. So I'm just crocheting my ass off. Uh, so yeah. I have some stuff to sell when I get there. And at this jam that's happening on Saturday um, here in Portland, be there, be square. <laughs> um, sweet, man. Uh, I think yeah. that covers most of the anything. I'd like to just ask one question. Uh, you, you talked about this uh, earlier, but you know, can you give us some insight on like kind of what changes you've made uh, with what you're eating recently. Cause I think that's really important. I think that's, you made it seem like it helped you a lot. So I'd love to go more in depth on that yeah. just for the viewers or the listeners. Well, I, uh, I really started, man. Well, my, my mom, she's you're always not eating. This, uh, not eating anymore. Just, uh, just my mom's always had this thing where she eats healthy, but excessively. And I realized I had the same thing when I moved out. I forget what it's called, but when I moved out, um, I like realized I had the same thing. I was eating healthy, but excessively. And I also have like really strong sweet tooth. So just really tapping into that, uh, moving here to Portland recently, just like um, not eating junk, processed anything. Uh, if I do have something sweet, it's like it's like a banana or grapes um, or like orange juice. I I always get some orange juice. Uh, and uh meat and eggs um yeah that's pretty much it like just meat and eggs breakfast i just have like i'll just make some 80 20 ground beef patties and put four eggs on those and then i'll eat that for lunch and then i'll eat that for dinner i have a dozen eggs a day um it's uh it's God, i love that a dozen eggs a day a dozen because i have four it's eggs easy eggs. Yeah. Huh? It just makes it That's easy awesome. to buy, right? Like, oh, this is one day, dozen eggs, dozen eggs, dozen eggs, right? And, those, and yep. instead of like plating them up, it's just easy. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, um, yeah. That's cool. I, I think I think there's a lot uh, that is un there's a lot of untapped potential there for a lot of people who are selling are you know kind of you know selling themselves uh, coming up short a little bit uh, on what they're eating. I think I think for you, you've said it's such a big part in your chain so far. It's definitely played a role, and I think it just speaks volumes. Oh, yeah, just what your how your energy levels are doing. I mean, you're able to wake up every single day and go run and challenge yourself. And you know, if you're eating like the way you used to, I, I guarantee that it'd be a lot, lot harder. Um, so yeah, and it, it and definitely doesn't even the mindset to too. Even yeah. like mindset with playing, like I I feel more able to just breathe instead of fucking up that one de one second decision and breaking a tama. I'm able to like be more clear headed and just be like, yeah. it's just a toy. Yeah. Less brain fog. I've heard that a lot when people switch to more animal based uh, foods. Um, yeah. Awesome, man. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. I think it really goes a long way. It's such a, it's such a, on paper, it seems because it's such a simple way of eating, right? Like you're just eating the couple things, but they're all, or mostly all of them are 
optimal for your body as a human, like necessary, right? Like they're giving you the necessary vitamins and necessary nutrients. And there's not really much waste. We'll just say waste as in the processed stuff you used to eat, right? Like there's not much waste going in there. You're being more conscious right. about what you put in and what you spend your money on. And it's, yeah, dude, I think that's also just plays a huge part in your development. So um, usually yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad it's been working out for you. Yeah. But, it's been working out great. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Guys, I think this is, uh, I think we can wrap it here. Yeah. Zach, anything else? No, that was it. No, that was a, that was an amazing podcast. Edwin, thank you so much for, for joining us today. You know, you're our second interview on, on G pod and this has been a fantastic conversation and I can't wait for everybody else in the community to, to hear it. Do you have anything else you want to say that we didn't mention real quick or. Um, well, something that popped into my head that, uh, that was huge that I, I didn't really say was, um, when uh when i say i want to be the best uh to ever touch the toy it doesn't mean win it doesn't mean anything like that i want no matter if i'm winning catch and flow winning world cup winning all that stuff they see the person who did win and there's they're still like but there's this other guy and it doesn't matter if i win i'm going the distance i'm doing my best and i'm still pushing the limits of the kendama to the point where people are like but there's this guy uh and uh another thing is um if people are wondering what I'm drinking, it's just water. There's just a bunch of water in this. <laughs> <laughs> For those it. who haven't, he's drinking out of a huge, this fat bottle, just wide. Just it's just cold brew. It looks, looks yeah, like yeah, it's, it's a like Caldera brewing, like brewing company out of Ashland, Oregon. Um, yeah. It's a sixty-three ounce um, little thing. It's great. It's fantastic. You know, a lot of people think it's like syrup. They're like, what are you drinking? Syrup? <laughs> yeah. You're like, no, oh, I definitely. No. <laughs> yeah, it's just water. Um, all right, guys. Well, this has been a great talk and excited to have you on in the future, Edwin. Excited to keep working with you with G Standards. Let's yeah. keep, uh, keep pushing it. Being better players, being better uh, people. It's only it's only beginning. So, all right. Yeah, thanks, Edwin. Yeah, let's do it. Thank you, guys. I, I really appreciate this. Uh, when you guys hit me up, I was so stoked. So um, I really appreciate this. This went much better than I thought it would, honestly. And I can't wait for these <laughs> next things to happen, dude. <laughs> let's keep everybody. going. Let's keep going. Let's do right, it. Everyone. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Peace.